is Matt from the Man Cave. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching with your daily devotion for July the 25th. Hope you're having an excellent day. Guys, I'm two coffees down, meaning this. I've drank in two cups of coffee. You know it's going to be crazy, baby. Guys, we're going to be in Luke's writings. We're in chapter 12, verse 15. It says this. One's life does not consist in the abundance of the things he possesses. Do you know that is in direct opposition to what the TV tells me every day? It's in direct opposition to billboards, okay, and advertisements and the internet. It's in direct opposition of 99% of the people that you meet on a daily basis, okay? They're going to say, uh, the people you meet every day, they're going to say, that's not true. I, I mean, I believe in the Bible, dude. I went to the Easter Sunday service, man. Uh, listen, listen, that verse, somehow it got in there and it shouldn't be in there, man. Listen to it. One's life does not consist in the abundance of things he possesses. Man, my whole life is about nothing more than me and my boat on the weekends, my jet skis, my house, everything I own. Listen, listen, I'm commander in chief. Here's the thing. When I die, I want to have lots of toys and lots of money. That's my life. If we ever put our resources, our trust, our confidence, our identities, okay, our toys, our money, our position, our providence, security, in anything other than God, we've missed the mark. It's idolatry, okay? It is sin. It's a lure of Satan. It's a trick of Satan. I can't tell you how many people, okay, that he's pulled one over on them, okay? Oh, yeah, I can. The majority of people in life, okay, are not content, okay, with God alone. Listen very carefully. They're, they're not happy with God alone. They want the world, okay? Hey, the world is not enough. They could have the world, and they still want more. They went up to Rockefeller one time, and they say, hey, how much money is enough? Now, realize this. He's a billionaire. He said, one more dollar. <laughs> See, that's the mentality. But with that mentality comes this. They're never happy. They're never satisfied. They're never content. That means they always have to have more to feel something on the inside. Okay, and here's the thing. That doesn't work. Why? Because here's the thing. Since I always need more, I'm never satisfied with light. I'm never content. I'm never able to walk down the road in my current situation and smell the roses and enjoy life and enjoy all that God has given me at any given moment. Okay. I don't need the world as a Christian to feel good about life, to have peace, to have content okay, to enjoy this life. And friends, here's the thing. If you're going through life and you always have to have this, 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 okay, to be happy, guess what? You're never going to be happy. Guys, okay, that's the reason in the Bible in Ephesians 5, 5, that the apostle Paul says this, that the covetous man, okay, is an idolater. I mean, he's saying the person that just has to have this is always thinking about this, is always entertaining this thing. I mean, they're never, uh, they're never satisfied and God has blessed you and I and he's blessed many other people that will watch this video, but they're never happy. It's always more. It's always the bigger house, okay? And when they have the dream house, it's not enough because of what? Because of this principle, okay? Because they are serving the God of this world. They are serving Satan. They are serving their flesh and Satan has pulled one over on them. Lucifer, the great dragon, Beelzebub, has pulled the greatest caper on them, okay? It has them entertaining these thoughts that this will make you happy or this will make you happy or this position, this person, this type of sex, okay? Outside of marriage, all these different things. It's mind-boggling. All the different things he's throwing our way and it's coming at us, okay? And, and friends, it's coming at us at a million miles an hour, okay? Listen, listen, listen. None of that makes you happy. Uh, what, what are you talking about, man? No, no, it doesn't make you happy because you want more. The Bible would ask this question of us. Where's your treasure? It, it, it'd say, what, what is your life? I mean, here's the thing. All those things are fun and they're in, in, enjoyable. I'm not saying they're not enjoyable. And I'm not saying if God adds those unto you, you, you can't enjoy them, okay? But that was never, nothing materialistic was supposed to be God. No person other than Jesus Christ was supposed to be your God. And oftentimes we will make sex our God or power or mammon or materialism or position or jobs or titles. We make all these different things God. And, and again, Paul the Apostle said, hey, uh, you as a covetous person I are an idolater and no idolater is ever going to make it into the kingdom of heaven. Why? Because that has become your God. So many people, and it doesn't matter whether it's church or outside the church. <laughs> Listen very carefully. Because the same people that are outside the church are inside the church. There's very few of God's people where he's in. Listen very carefully. We're going to make it to heaven one day, one way or another. And you're like, oh, so it all, all roads lead to Rome? No. No. <laughs> I'm talking about the great white throne judgment, okay? I'm talking about you being in the wrong line, okay? And I wonder if you were standing there, and it was your turn, and you're standing before God and you have what's called full knowledge because after you die and you enter into eternity, you have full knowledge of everything there is to know, okay? So now you're standing before Almighty God and He asks you one question, which He already knows the answer. Why wasn't I enough? Why wasn't Jesus enough? He doesn't need to ask you the question, 
where was your treasure? Because he already knows that because of what you focused on, what you thought about, your drive, your desires. He, he already knows what you're about. I, I, I think a lot of people are playing games with Almighty God, okay? They say they love God. They say they want to go to heaven. They say they want to serve Him. And they say He's number one in their life. But that is not the truth by their actions, their deeds, their decisions, and their choices, and the things that come out of their mouth. He is really not number one in their life, but He's just down here. You know what He is? He's like a safety net to a lot of you. When you die, you want to know that you're going to heaven. Nobody wants to live this life and think, when I close my eyes in death, I'm going to open them up in hell. Listen very carefully. Your life was supposed to be so much more than just accumulating a bunch of stuff. Tin, plastic, rubber, steel. I mean, think about it. What is this TV right here? Well, it's plastic. There's metal. There's components on it. What about this? Wood, hay, stuff. You see what I'm saying? Listen, I want you to reevaluate your life today. I really do. I want you to think about what you've been doing and has it worked so far? Is it God's will? Is it God's plan? Is it, I mean, really, if, that's, if God's told you, hey, I want you to have $50 million. I want you to have 10 houses, okay? I want you to be filthy rich, okay? And I don't want you to tithe. I don't want you to give. I want you to be self-centered, okay? I want you to be a jerk. Okay, if that's what he's spoken to you, then live it out, okay? But I don't think that's what he spoke to you, is it? I mean, a lot of us think he spoke those things, and a lot of us want these blessings, okay? And why is it? Are we trying to keep up with someone down the road? Are we trying to keep up with the Joneses? I just did a video a couple days about that, okay? And we can't keep up with the Joneses because God has allotted every person their due in life. Guys, 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 listen to the text again. One's life does not consist. It says it doesn't consist in the abundance of the things that he possesses. Your life is more than a pillow. I mean, here's the thing. Do you want me to compare your life to a pillow? Uh, hey, Joe, guess what? You're equal to the pillow. Uh, I worked real, real hard so I could get 10 of those pillows. And I, when someone walks in my door, they're going to say, my goodness, Joe, you have the nicest pillows. Or what about the leather couch? Oh my goodness. Friends, I, I want to help you here. Okay. The text that we're going over says your life is much more than anything that you can accumulate. Okay. Jesus didn't die for a pillow. He didn't die for a couch. Jesus didn't die for the TV. Jesus didn't die for the computers over here. He didn't die for my fridge with all the food in it. He died for me. Do you understand what I'm saying? The things that Satan is pushing and the world is trying to tell you will make you happy if you have this, and this will bring some lasting contentment. He will play that game up until you no longer have the ability to work or no longer have the ability to gain money, to gain wealth, to gain the materialism, okay? And this is the game that you've been playing your whole life, and then he laughs at you because now you're old and you've wasted all your years on things, okay? How long is this TV good for? I mean, how long do they last? Five years? Six years? Seven years? Okay, and this breaks, and then i got to get another one. But it's the newest one at that time, okay? And I guess in two years, there's going to be even a newer one. Your life isn't about possessions, even though you like them, okay? Your life is about Him. He died for you. He loves you. He's not dying for your couch. He's not dying for your TV. He's not dying for your dog. He died for you. That makes you so valuable to Him. The Bible would say this, what is your life? Well, I know my life has been given to me by Almighty God, and it's very short in comparison to eternity. Where's my treasure? Is my treasure God, or is my treasure my job, or is my treasure this, or this, or this title, or power? You know what I'm saying? The majority of people in life have missed it. Look at, look at, look at. I would say out of every 100 people, 99 have missed it. They've missed it, okay? And so they have a lot of what I'm talking about. But it doesn't bring joy. It doesn't bring contentment. They're not enjoying life. Okay? But God says these words, and we'll stop here. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. All these other things. I have no problem with you having them. That's what he says. You see what I'm saying? And so everybody... They want the good stuff. They think this will make me happy. It won't bring you happy if you don't have God number one in your life. But... If God is number one in your life and God adds that to your life, and when God adds things, you always heard, you've heard me say this many times, He doesn't add it with a burden. When God adds that unto your life with no burden, you will enjoy it. You are just a steward of it, okay? You realize that everything in this life belongs to God, all the materialistic stuff, the cattle on the thousand hill and all the hill and everything belongs to God. He's allowing me to enjoy it. He's allowing me to use it. If He gives it, great. If He takes it away, great. It doesn't matter. It's His, it's his prerogative, whatever He will. Realize this. All those things were never meant to be treasures. They weren't meant to be my 
God they weren't meant to be showpieces, okay, to brag, I've made it, I have it, okay, the, oh, you've missed it, partner, okay, if you think that, okay, because you don't know when God will require your life, and I promise you, you're not taking that object with you when you stand before Almighty God. Which line will you be in heaven? Will you be in the beam of seat judgment where King Jesus is rewarding you for the life that you've lived, or will you be in the great white throne judgment where you are being sentenced to hell and the lake of fire, okay, because of who your God was? Who is your God this day? Is it possessions that you can't take to heaven, or is it Jesus that's already in heaven waiting for you, and he lives inside your heart? What is it What you need day? to do, guys, is do a self-evaluation, okay? Why do I do what I do? Why do I want this certain object? Is God number one in my life? Is he really the love of my life, or are other things the love of my life? What have I been doing in the past? Do I need to ask God to forgive me? H have I missed the mark? Am I on the Broadway, and I didn't even realize it? Have I been paying homage to God? Meaning, I've been living like this. I've been living like the world. I've been trying to consume. I've been trying to find happiness in the world and of the world and of the things of the world and engaging of the things of the world just like God said, don't do it, okay? But I go to church and I will pray and I'll read and I'll play the Christian card out there, okay? And, Thinking and, and here's the thing, I'll throw a couple bucks in the offering plate, you know, because I want to play this out up until the end that you die and you open your eyes in hell because you never had a personal relationship with God in a meaningful manner, that he was number one in your life, that he was all that you needed. He added the things other than you adding the things. So I guess what I'm trying to say is this, is make sure your life is more than just stuff and your desire for stuff and your accumulation of stuff. Okay, I mean, that's here's the thing. When I think of you hanging out with me in the man cave, I'm thinking about you as a person. I'm thinking about how cool you are. You know what I'm saying? How there's no one like you, that God says he has a purpose and a plan for your life, okay, that he says he sent his only begotten son to die for you. I'm thinking about all those cool things, all you're going to accomplish for Christ, all that you're going to do for the kingdom of heaven, all that you've already done, okay, yeah, along the road, okay, yeah, we've had a couple trip ups, we've fallen down a couple times, but we got back up, okay, we brushed off, we asked God to forgive us, we're moving forward. See, you're more than what you own, you're more than what you wear, you're more than what you drive, you're more than a position that a man gives you. No, you're a citizen of heaven, you're a child of God, and God gave his only begotten son to die for you. He gave his blood for you. Friends, don't sell out for a couch, a TV, a house, a car, all nice in their proper place. But here's the thing. God has so much more for you than those things, okay? Once you understand just a little bit of what I'm talking about and you find that peace, you find that contentment, you can start resting and abiding. You won't believe how the heavens will actually open up and a lot of those desires that you were trying to get the wrong way are added unto your life because now you realize you're a steward. I enjoy this. I enjoy this. I enjoy this. I like to do this. But here's the thing. That's not my God. He's my God. He's the one that died for me. He's the one that leads me daily. And here's the thing. I'm going to love him and put him number one in my life. Hey, I hope this helped you out. This is Matt from the Man Cave.